we're ready to jump right in to our panel discussion questions. If you could please tell us, sorry about that, how the COVID-19 pandemic has affected your industry and or business from an employment recruitment and retention perspective. Hi, as you, as you heard, I'm in, uh, with Kane Logistics and it's a supply chain. So most of our uh, products are food-based. So the pandemic only made us need more people. Some people were still coming in for positions in the supply chain industry. Um, we, we brought on new customers during it because we did well. We did, I will, I'm very proud of the fact that we launched the uh, COVID very early. We were one of the first adopters and we got it out to our customers who also said we were impressed. We wanted people to, to not just feel safe, but be safe. So everything that was out there, we read and we adopted early on to help the people that were coming in every day be safe. Of course, with the uh, federal relief money going into people who were unemployed, we did have some people who were preferred to be unemployed rather than work. Um, so we countered that just like every other employer, having to put more money into it to bring people in and keep them there. Um, we tried to make it fun too, like we do, you know, raffles of TVs and different things to whatever would motivate that particular DC. Um, but to say that it is unprecedented, which is a word I'm sick of hearing, and as you all probably are, uh, it really was. I've been in uh, recruiting for 30 years, and it's very, it becomes very difficult to hire people. So you get. Um, all of us, and, and we didn't have a chance to talk yet, us HR people, but we went to grassroots, we call it, back to what we did years ago, anything, flyers, churches, um, you know, other things that are real simple, and then also adopting technology, simple technology, QR codes, apps people are getting. We did, um, we just started the QR code, we've been using a, a quick five digit that Indeed offers. Um, Indeed is our number one source, as most people, um, it's their number one source as well, and um, they, they ha keep growing and adding things to keep us as employers fresh and coming back to them. It's difficult times for, for everybody. Um, it doesn't matter what industry you're in or what business you're in. Um, from a, an employment standpoint, um, we took um, you know, all the safeguards in the, in the, in the consideration, put plexiglass up in a financial institution, at some point closed our doors, which was a you know, a long time, a long standing no-no to do once a, once a bank or credit union closes its doors, uh, it sends the wrong message. But in this event, everybody kind of knew why. Um, and we had to, uh, um, you know, show, I believe we, had, we did a good job in showing our employees that we took it seriously uh, by um, establishing cleaning measures, hiring an outdoor, outside cleaning company to come in once or twice a week to do a deep cleansing, um, offering, um, uh, generous uh, work from home uh, benefits. We probably purchased about 20 laptops so that uh, we can encourage people to work from home, which hasn't changed. We actually kept that adoption afterwards. And uh, I think it helps with uh, employee retention, especially if they have uh, a dependent to care for, whether it's a, whether it's a parent, a sibling, um, a child. Um, there's all, there is a multitude of different reasons. And, you know, employment in this new era has to, you know, shift and start to consider those type of benefits if they're able to. Um, I mean, it makes it difficult uh, from a warehousing standpoint because somebody's got to drive the pork trucks. And it makes it difficult from the construction standpoint because somebody's got to go and swing a hammer. Um, and from a banking perspective, you know, there are members that will come in. And uh, thankfully, we adopted a digital strategy a few years ago that uh, enabled our members to do more of their banking remote. And we've seen that traffic shift online. Uh, which you know keeps our employees a bit safer, keeps our members, gives them peace of mind that they can do their banking outside of the credit union, and uh, we've made it work successfully. From a recruiting standpoint, it's a nightmare. It absolutely is a nightmare. Um, I think with we we've, we've had to hire a couple of local recruiters to help us because the traditional channels or using uh, online uh, channels like uh, LinkedIn or uh, Indeed uh, to recruit have made it difficult. So um, hiring a local a recruiter and uh, you know, quite possibly attending job uh, seminars are going to be uh, key for us in the future as we continue to expand. I mean, we're planning to build a branch next year. We're in the final phases of architectural drawings and we're going to have to hire six more people. And we just hired uh, seven people over the last 12 months in the call center and, and, and information technology. And that was a struggle to find people. So, um, you know, 
it, you have to be flexible. And uh, for us, hiring a local crew really helped us. Um, as Clarence mentioned, you know, in the construction industry, you still need people to swing hammers. So for us, we had a unique um, situation. We had construction job sites su shut down, the majority of them for six weeks last spring. Um, in early March, however, our company had formed a task force um, of our leadership team plus our safety director, um, a, cu a couple of other key people, and we had conference calls every single day at 5 p.m. just to talk about what was happening, what our steps were going to be. Um, so we, we had a three-phase plan um, that we implemented. Phase three was you know, shutting down and moving to remote work um, and keeping the job sites up and running if we were able to. Um, so it actually went very smoothly for us. In terms of recruiting, we rely a lot on word of mouth. Um, we've grown actually quite a bit um, during the last 18 months since COVID. So we've shifted to doing interviews on Zoom. Um, we use LinkedIn quite a bit and Indeed to advertise for positions. Um, so having the technology and part of our plan was being able to transition seamlessly from being based in the office and in job site trailers to um, to working remotely. So so that part went pretty well. Um, we, we've probably not had the challenges that maybe some others have with uh, the federal assistance programs impacting our in industry. Um, hasn't happened quite as much for us. Um, but we are seeing and c will continue to see a lot of volatility in um, our supply chain getting materials and, and pricing volatility. So it's difficult, you know, you can have a price on something one month and then all of a sudden lumber or another material goes through the roof. Right now it's the, um, the motherboards for HVAC equipment that are difficult to get. So that impacts our jobs and we just do our best to, to work with everyone involved to, to keep things on track. Uh, we are new to the area. Um, we're a brand new business here in Lackawanna County. Um, in, uh, in Oliphant, where the old Sinram or WIA Manufacturing Center uh, was located. So we have not gone live yet with production um, at our manufacturing facility. So we are very much um, growing up and creating our business in this COVID world. So it's hard to say how it, you know, it would have been prior to COVID, whereas where it is now. So we're just living in the new regulations, um, you know, the new safety requirements, uh, and, and things like that. So we've been very fortunate to, um, you know, be able to successfully recruit to date. Um, you know, we started very heavy recruiting in the, the February, March timeframe, and we managed to go from zero to 340 employees in that time frame. So, um, you know, we have been very successful um, in living in the new regulations. Uh, you know, with regard to our recruiting, uh, we're definitely getting more creative with what we're doing. Um, with the amount of people that left the workforce temporarily, uh, you know, with, with COVID and their personal situations, it's, you know, how do we get in front of them and how do we make them want to come to work for us uh, over all of the other people that are also struggling and looking for, uh, looking for those, the, that workforce. So we're getting creative. We're attending um, different types of events outside of your traditional job fairs and things like that. Um, an example we went to, um, you know, we're going to benefits um, that locally in the area, we're going to festivals, we're going to um, football games, um, you know, we're going to different areas and getting out in the community in every way that we can. Last week we went to the halfway to St. Patrick's Day Parade, um, had a float in the parade, we were handing out recruitment cards and talking to, to folks. So we're just being as creative as possible to get our brand awareness out there and to make people want to pick us over all of the other businesses in the area that are hiring. Thank you to the panelists. The next question that I have for you, and you might have touched on it a little bit with the first question, but if you could just tell us about the types of careers and positions that you're recruiting for. And some of you mentioned that the impact of the pandemic has changed the nature of some of that and some of those roles. So maybe just get into a little bit more detail about that. Who would like to start? Uh, so we are always looking for qualified people um, and accepting resumes. Uh, we have a wide variety of positions. You know, a construction business is like any other business. So we have an accounting department. We have an HR director. Um, we have safety. We have field operations. Um, we have marketing. We have business development. So we, we have quite a bit of variety in, in those positions. Um, I would say you know, our, our biggest need right now is on the project management side and 
cost estimating and field superintendents. So um, we also, and I should have mentioned this before, another strategy we have is we offer an employee referral bonus. So if an employee brings someone in for an interview and that person is hired and stays for six months, that employee receives a bonus. So that's been a really good program um, because we are so driven by, by word of mouth. Thank you. So CanPack is an aluminum beverage can manufacturer. So we are hiring um, for mostly production manufacturing um, warehousing type positions. So it's very interesting for us that there isn't anyone else in the area um, outside of one of our competitors who's also new to the area um, in the Wilkes-Barre, Pittston um, side, but no one in the area is familiar with aluminum beverage can manufacturing. So we don't really have the luxury of hiring anyone with experience. So we are very much um, targeting those folks with relevant experience that we can train um, or who might be interested in learning this type of work. So we're looking for machine technicians to um, maintain and operate the, uh, the machinery that creates the beverage cans. Um, we're also looking for electricians. We are looking for machinists, um, maintenance technicians, those types of individuals. We're also um, you know, looking for quality control, um, as quality control is uh, vital to the entire process to make sure that um, you know, everything is running the way it's supposed to, and um, warehousing positions, forklift drivers specifically. Don't go there, go to us. <laughs> so we're across, uh, I'm not sure if all the businesses said, but we're across the U.S., so we're from the, the, all the way over to the West Coast, so we have 22 locations. But uh, here in Scranton, we have still we started here a family business in 1931. It's still um, very large presence here, and most of the jobs that we look for locally are um, are the same. They're warehousing, so we're looking for forklift operators. We've added multiple shifts, which with all the business coming on, so we have you know that challenge to staff an entirely new shift, not just filling in for a little bit of. Um, a little, you know, a small uphill. So we, we struggle with that. We've done everything that, um, you know, I'm here partly to steal ideas. We've done everything that um, these uh, two women have mentioned as well, you know, uh, associate referrals, um, other, other things. But uh, we also do have jobs in our finance. Most of our financial department is located here. Uh, some of it is split in Atlanta, but we've been, we just staffed up three financial positions, so professional positions. Um, which people tend to forget about. They look at us and they say, oh, you're just a warehouse. And it's like, well, you still have all of those other pieces of the departments that we're looking to fill. But again, here we're looking for a lot of forklift operators around the shift. We always say, pick your shift around your life. Um, we've probably got one for you. And we have done some training as well. Um, but that, that safety-wise, it wasn't, we couldn't invest enough in training to, to continue it. But um, we have again, we have enjoyed continuing probably just because we are around, people do tend to come to us and we get referrals. We're currently looking for an accounting uh, clerk or AP clerk. Um, we have a position open in compliance, uh, which is quality control for a bank or credit union. Um, you know, somebody to make sure we're adhering to the rules and regulations and protect us from uh, all the nasties that are out there. Um, we'll be looking for a branch manager as we go to open our new branch, an assistant branch manager. Um, I'll need lending personnel. Um, I'll need uh, tellers, uh, both full-time and part-time, and I uh, have a demand for you know, one or two openings right now. Um, and it makes it difficult to, to, uh, to recruit for those positions. Um, so those, those are the types of careers that we have. Uh, typically, uh, they're member-facing careers, but <clears throat> it's one thing to have like some or qualifications or jobs that, that you may have been in previously that might relate to it. The other component that I look for is how dynamic is the person. We are a member-facing uh, organization. Uh, we deal with, for lack of a better term, customers. We call them members in credit unions uh, because everybody has a say in a, in, a, in a credit union. And I look for those people who are dynamic to look for solutions for members, to answer their questions, and to make members feel comfortable uh, because when members are comfortable, then the employees are more comfortable. And w when everybody's comfortable, we do better business. It's just kind of a uh, kind of one of those things. So I look for dynamic people. I look for those uh, soft skill qualities where they can have conversations. And as we know, as we've grown up in the texting world, sometimes it's difficult to find somebody who has face-to-face -face communication skills because everybody's looking at their phone. Um, but those are the openings that we have and what we look for is what, what, at Net Credit Union uh, for employees. We want those dynamic people that um, show promise to move 
and advance in other areas of the credit union as we, uh, as we continue to grow. For example, you know, we've had a number of internal opportunities where um, as we continue to grow, we develop positions. So I need another collections person uh, because the collection person is within the lending. She wanted to grow. We had an opportunity. We opened the door. Now she gets to grow. And you have people in an organization that have that, that see opportunity and they see growth. Um, this will stumble into another conversation about retention, but they have to see that path towards advancement. So one of my tellers went to collections, and now I need to tell her to replace them. So that's that's kind of how the, the flow works. And if we can continue to grow our organization internally and find those dynamic people to bring them in, I think it's going to help us continue our success. I hope I answered your question. Thank you. you. You teed me up very well for the next question. And in fact, we've, we've answered bits and pieces of it. I, I guess it's just a matter of whether you have anything additional to add. And the question is, from your perspective, how have you had to shift your employee retention and recruitment post-COVID? Now, you've addressed some of that throughout the last couple of questions, but maybe you have some additional information to add. Who would like to start? One key thing for us, uh, particularly on the, on the retention side, has been communication, right? It's changed. Um, everyone is not in one location. Um, so we have ha been having frequent town hall meetings on Zoom. Sometimes they're an hour long, sometimes they're longer. Over the warmer months, we've been able to get people together outside. So for a cookout, um, that sort of thing. Um, just making people feel like they're, they're a part of things, that's always been an important part of our culture. And, um, and we've had to find new ways, new ways to do that. In my opinion, it's, and Canpac's opinion, it's the culture component um, to a business that really is gonna be driving the, the retention of your employees. Now more than ever, um, everyone is hiring. Everyone's looking for very similar um, skills and, and the same workforce. And you know, it's, it's more the uh, employees or the candidates market than ever before. So, you know, it's, it's really the with them, you know, the what's in, it for the what's in it for me, for the employees to decide, do you want to come to my business? And then once you come to my business, do you want to stay there? So it's more the culture than anything else. Um, a lot of the companies here, we're, we're all, it's similar work. We're all offering similar benefits, um, you know, similar jobs. So it's really the culture for us. So, you know, we're working on driving that culture, making it, an, trying to make our, ourselves an employer of choice and trying to keep our, our employees. So it's manager training, um, it's benefits that we're offering, it's the work environment, it's um, you know the, the employees, their working relationships. So it's really spending the time to develop all of those pieces um, you know, to try and get people to, to stay with, with your company. I would, I would say, as both Jen and Carrie said, we, we've changed the way we communicate. Ours is a little bit different. Um, some those people who are working from home administratively um, and to communicate to the people in the DCs, we've gone to postcards. Everything is postcards now. Um, so we've, we've, we use that for recruiting and communicating about COVID and the expectations and any um, associate referrals that we have. Um, but also, as Carrie said, it's, it's a differentiating factor. You know, what is that differentiating factor for you? And once we get them in the door, the key is to, you know, we used to call it re-recruiting, but is to try to keep them embedded, right? That's, that's the key to keep them embedded in the environment. And it's concentrating on that culture. And it's even though we've grown, we're not a family owned business anymore, we still try to keep that. So when we look, Clarence talked about hiring people peppy. That's what we try to look for when we're hiring supervisors, those frontline people that are going to interact and can't help themselves. Like like most of us who are on stage now, like I've noticed Clarence is a little, He's, a, he's a, you know, out there, he talks, he makes a joke, he makes you feel welcome and you want to talk to him. That's what we look for. So now we, we look for that even more. So not only do you have to have the skill sets of the warehouse, you have to have the personality too, because to, that's the key to helping keep the people in, the, in our warehouses. Never been called that before, but, uh, but thank you. Um, being flexible um, over the last 18 months has been one of the components I think we've all touched on a little bit but you have to be flexible because um, things are popping up. Uh, dependents uh, I have a need. There's, there might be a doctor's appointment that people have to go to. Uh, somebody gets COVID, somebody thinks they have COVID, somebody thinks they came in contact with somebody they think might have COVID. Being flexible uh, to those needs of your employees is number one, listening to them. Uh, we talked about work from home guidelines. You know, If I can have tellers work from home, I do that, but that, that, that we have to draw the line there. Uh, unless we get drone technology to deliver money. 
uh, but being flexible with your staff and keeping an eye on them, burnout. You know, there have been some times when we had to change our business model temporarily because of COVID uh, uh, guidelines and we were running on very low staff. So keeping an eye and open communication, we touched on this before, with your staff as well as key. How are you feeling? How are you doing today? Are you tired? You look tired. Use your vacation time. The last year during the, the shutdown, there was two parts of the year that we were shut down and it's rolled into the third part. We split our teams in half and half our, half our employees just stayed home. No work, we'll pay you to stay home is we're gonna, we're gonna shut the doors and COVID's starting to spike and we don't want anybody to get sick. You know, our, your employees seeing that, seeing you take that step sends them a message. And then, um, you know, not penalizing for not using their vacation time, allowing them to roll more over. I mean, what is it for us? It's just, a, it's just an accounting treatment on, on that vacation and how, to, how, how, how they can maintain their benefits and not lose them. And um, management, um, we had a, a hard line where at least, you know, half the management crew were on site. And if you couldn't be on site, we had to get a replacement because um, we lead from the front. We don't lead from behind. Um, we want boots on the ground. I, I, I use a lot of military and baseball sports jargon, but you got to have feet on the floor and your employees have to see you there, not sitting in your ivory castle and not, you know, going down to where the work is being done. Make yourself visible. You know, captain walks through the ship every once in a while just to say hi. That's what I do. I, and then I unclog toilets. I mean, what, what else do I do there? It's, it's like I'm the chief washroom attendant, but showing them that, that you care is, is definitely top of the list. And we didn't have to implement a new retention strategy or program. We were already doing that as an organization. And that showed with the retention of the numbers that we kept. So, you know, hey, it's banking. You just got to make it fun. Some of you have already answered this question as well. If there's anything new or additional you want to add, but how would you talk about how you currently advertise for your available careers? So we've heard uh, you mentioned Indeed and some other ways that you're getting the information out there. Is there anything else that you'd like to talk about and add? In addition to what was already mentioned, we have had a lot of success with holding and advertising open interviews or on-the-spot interviews. So um, we've been advertising very heavy for this um, in, in a couple of different outlets, um, you know, billboard advertising, um, social media, radio. Um, but the, the walk-in interviews or on-the-spot interviews, we've been holding them every Tuesday and Thursday for the last few months. And um, we've had a consistent flow of candidates coming in every single week. So some weeks are a little bit slower than others, um, but every single week we've had um, anywhere from you know, 10 to 40 um, on a good week walk-in interviews just coming in um, every Tuesday and Thursday between 12 and 5. Um, it's been very successful for us to make ourselves available so that people can come in at the best time that works for them. We, we are doing the same thing as well, and we're doing, it's, the key is consistency. We do We Hire Wednesdays in Scranton. So I had a, you know, if you're telling them when to come, stop by to see us from 10 to 3 uh, any, any Wednesday. But it, it is really helpful to keep that open, and then if, they, if you have that consistency, they know, okay, I can't make it this week, I'll make it next week. Um, so we don't have as many, luckily, to hire as you probably do, but that's been helpful to us, too. Even though sometimes four people will show up, we might hire two, which we consider a win, because we're there anyway, yeah. right? I'd like to just take the opportunity also, you know, the Chamber is doing the Workforce Wednesday initiative as well, and that gives businesses an opportunity to talk about what they're looking for and to share that with people that may not have that awareness. And also, the Chamber has a job board, just so everybody's aware of that, at www.scrantonchamber.com. Thank you for those, those answers. The next question, and we've heard some really descriptive adjectives so far about what you're looking for in employee candidates in terms of uh, being peppy or having those soft skills, dependability, flexibility, the workplace specific skills, but who else would like to add uh, some additional thoughts to that question? I think we're all looking for the same, uh, same crew. Um, I, I do like seeing when military uh, veterans apply. Um, you know, being one, uh, I, I kind of know the work ethic is already in place. Um, I, I'd like to see people who are looking for uh, growing personal growth. I mean, we offer a tuition reimbursement program, and some of my employees have already taken advantage of it, which is great. 
Uh, it only makes the credit union stronger when they learn something, a new skill or a new task, or you know, if they want to go into finance or you know, some other part of the business. Um, I'm looking for people who can work together as a team because um, this is a, definitely a team-oriented uh, panel that we have here. Um, so teamwork definitely is important. And, um, you know, one of my pet peeves, okay, when I go to hire is uh, I, I look for people who have, like, a little bit of flexibility. If their name's, like, Christopher, and I'm like, you mind if I call you Chris? And if somebody says, yes, I do, and I'm like, eh, I don't know if we're going to get along, you know? Because I'll forget your name, like, for the first six months. It just happens. I'm getting, you know, into those golden years. So, um, you know, but I look for that spirit in that person as well because they're going to be dealing with my members. And I got members that cover all different demographics. And that person, if they can't be flexible with me, how are they going to be flexible with my members? That's something I look for. Uh, because member service has to come first in any of our businesses. You have to treat your customer, or your endpoint, your client like they're golden because there's less and less opportunities as we continue to grow and get through this COVID stuff. We're pretty similar to what Clarence expressed in terms of the skills we're looking for, right? You obviously need the skills for the, the position you're interested in, but then it's those soft skills. And where we're looking for is good communication skills. Come in, right? Make eye contact. If you're on Zoom, make sure we can we can see your face and not the, the top of your head. Um, so all of those things. And just somebody who's committed. We We have really well-established core values. And so when we're looking for the right cultural fit, we're looking for someone that we think is going to exhibit those. And our core values are true north, community-driven, trusted partner, and, uh, gosh, I'm forgetting the fourth one, stronger together is our fourth. So, you know, a team player, someone that has a lot of integrity, someone that is involved in other things in the community. We're, you know, not just coming to work and then, and then checking out, but someone who's invested in the community that, that they live in. Um, so in addition to the specific job skills, which can vary quite a bit depending on the position, um, somebody that's going to con really contribute to the, the company overall and to the team. You guys are doing such a great job. You're answering some of the questions as we go, which is awesome. You're thinking to have a, a good flow to the conversation. I really appreciate uh, all of your answers so far. We have talked a little bit in some of your answers to the earlier questions about how can job seekers find and apply for employment within your company. Is there anybody that would like to add to that or talk specifically about that process um, within your company? You can check us out online, uh, www.netcreditunion.com. Uh, we do post it under careers link. We also advertise on social media. We do put uh, items up on, on in, in Indeed, um, and uh, we do use a recruiter. By checking our website, um, definitely can and zone in on, on the career you're looking for. And if you're curious uh, and you just want to submit a resume, info at netcreditunion.com will also get you there. And on the home page, uh, you can find a link directly to me. It's called Clarence Cares. Uh, click on that, and I'll probably get it under with emails. But uh, you can always send me a resume, and I'll direct that to HR. So. Uh, we're always constantly looking to build our bench. We're, we're a growing organization. We've grown masterfully over the last 18 months, believe it or not, throughout this entire pandemic. Um, you know, we've been teaming up and, and hit, the, hit it along. So um, always looking for those dynamic people. So come check us out at Net Credit Union. Uh, I'd like to add to that. So we do the same things, except it's canelogistics.com. The, um, the one thing that we've struggled with as, as well, though, is it's got to be quick. It's got to, and I don't know if Carrie has experienced it. If they can't do it quickly, our, the two people that we're looking for don't want to email us. They don't even have emails. So we've done, we've used Indeed where they have a five-digit code that you can, you can send, and that'll get us, that'll just get their information into us, and then we call them. And then the other piece that we just launched is a QR code with a chat bot. So they don't even have to text. All they have to do is open your phone app, hover it over the QR code, and we immediately start chatting with you, uh, the person to get the information. So we think that's going to be a game changer for us. Yeah, I would, um, I would definitely agree with that. Um, ease of access um, is huge. Um, candidate or user experience is huge. Um, something that we've done was, um, you know, we're new here, but when we were building, um, you know, our different processes and policies and procedures, when we were building our application, um, you know, we had what we thought was a good start, and then we had to really pare it down. We got rid of all of the fluff, 
all of the things that truly don't matter um, to a business. Um, there's a lot of stuff on applications that don't really matter, <laughs> is what we found out. So we got rid of all of that. We pared it down. Um, we made it very simple, straightforward, and short, um, and you know, ac accessible um, mobily, um, so someone can apply online with their phone. Um, if someone does stop in on a Tuesday or Thursday, we don't even route them to a computer. We have a very short, simple paper application that we ask them to complete so we can have that on file. But it's all about um, ease of access, and it's all about the speed um, and how much it takes a candidate. Um, if it's too long, they're going to stop or they're going to quit, and you're going to lose them. Uh, our open positions are advertised on our website, which is sordoni.com. Um, we also use Indeed. Uh, we use recruiters for more specialized positions. Um, but anyone's welcome to send a resume at any point um, via our website. That's, that's the best way to get in touch with us. Or, as I mentioned before, through employee referrals. So if you know someone who works at a company, that's the best way to, to get to know what we're all about, what we might be hiring for at that time. And, uh, you know, that always helps your resume kind of make it to the top of the pile, too, if, if you know someone that, um, that currently works at our company. Great, thank you. The next question that I'd have, and we've talked about some of these essential skills already, but what essential skills should a job seeker possess to become employed in your industry or company? I know, I think everybody's uh, mentioned the importance of soft skills, and if you could elaborate maybe on some more industry-specific competencies that you're looking for, and maybe tell us a little bit more about that. Sure, so for us, uh, we are looking for... Um, Anyone who might have previous experience in a manufacturing environment, um, someone that's worked with their hands, someone who uh, can tear apart an engine and put it back together, someone who um, is technically oriented, has a technical drive, maybe went to Johnson College and doesn't have any work experience yet. So, you know, we are looking for, um, for those individuals for our manufacturing positions. Uh, it's, it's very much applicable experience in other industries or other areas. Um, and also very much, you know, hire for will and train skill. Uh, we need to train um, our folks specifically for our business because we are, um, we are new here. This industry is new here. So we're just looking for anyone who has, uh, you know, a mechanical background, a technical background, or even interest uh, with some relevant experience in other areas that might translate. Uh, we're also looking for more skilled uh, candidates or positions. So we have uh, electrician openings. So that's very, very much specific experience uh, that's required for those positions. The same thing with, you know, a machining position. So um, we have a lot of positions that we're willing to hire and train um, so that they can learn and, and grow into that role. And then some other others that we do require some more technical experience. I'll just focus on our, our main openings, our, our majority of our openings, and that's the forklift operator. We do test, so we do look for experience for the, to be a forklift operator. That could be very dangerous without a, a experience. So we'll, if, if somebody's got some and they're, they're pretty decent and we feel that they're comfortable around it, we will finish that training, um, which again, pre-COVID, we probably didn't. And we also um, hire for electric pallet jack, which is a picker, an order selector. They don't need the skills for that. We will train for that. They have to be willing to physically lump cases. Um, so that, you know, we'll, we'll hire from any industry if they're, if they're interested, like cooks, any, anybody that, um, you know, comes in and feels like they could do the job. The key thing that people don't realize that you also need is you have to have good math skills. So you, you only have to have English as a basic communication and be able to have English skills um, you know, to get through the communication throughout the day. But math skills have to be strong, otherwise you're loading the pallets and unloading them all in the wrong manner. So we also do a, a little, as they do their, their test, they do a little math test and say, hey, if you have five pallets and this way and six and, and do that. So that's another key piece. But beyond that, that that's what we look for. Yeah, in the um, like uh, member facing uh, uh, areas, tellers and, and member service work, a uh, person just has to be a dynamic, a good communicator, cash handling on skills are a plus. I like seeing a resume that shows a little bit of work experience so that at least I know they can punch a clock and be reliable. Um, you know, we've trained many people um, on how to be a teller, on how to be a member, uh, execute the duties of member service. Are, 
uh, new technology makes those uh, um, job tasks a little bit easier. But if you're not able to communicate, that's that's probably a, an issue. Uh, ed as far as education-wise, um, you know, I've had history majors that have worked for me. I've had, you know, people uh, of, of different backgrounds. My background, I mean, I, I came from manufacturing. Uh, so I came, I came from doing cost accounting to financial accounting. I remember my first job, I was like, I don't know how to do a financial statement for a financial institution. Never did it before. They said, don't worry, we'll train you. Um, as, you know, having those translatable skills help. You look for bright people. You know, you look for people with you know, a little spark in their eye that, uh, that want to achieve. Uh, and we're, we have the luxury of doing that as a small company. Um, so we can be selective on our hiring process. But I, I do look for people who can work uh, with a team and that um, you know, have a desire for some type of improvement. Um, the skills we're looking for in the education, as I mentioned before, really vary depending on the position. Um, if you're looking for something in field operations, like a foreman or superintendent, um, typically they're coming up through like an apprenticeship program or uh, maybe a two-year degree related to that. Um, we do have a number of internship positions in the summer, and we've hired um, a number of people that have gone through our internship program. So that's been really successful for us. Um, and that way, too, we have the ability to kind of train that person in how we do things as a company. Um, for other positions, it just it, it really depends. So some, some generally require you know, a four-year degree, again, in that area of, of expertise. We do prefer to hire people that have some work experience, unless you're coming into us as an intern initially. I'd really like to thank our panelists. They did an excellent job. And I'd also like to thank our sponsors and to the audience and everyone at Skills and the Chamber that worked so hard to pull all of this together today. Thank you very much. If anybody would like to talk to any of the panelists, we are going to get a photo, but if anybody would like to talk to the panelists for a few minutes after the photo, I know they'll be willing to stick around. So again, thank you for your attendance. Uh, thanks again to all of you, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Oh.